Alrighty guys, we're back for some mono red vampires and this is a March of the Machine, the Aftermath Standard Brew. We're going to go over the deck then hop right into some ranked but first things first for anyone who may not know. I'm Red Cat and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well so I hope that sounds fun to you. Also we do got that discord link down in the description if you're interested in joining that up. Okay, what do we got in the build here? A bunch of vampires that we don't get to see too often. We got all four Falcon Wrath Pit Fighters. This is a one mana, two, one vampire, and that's good enough, honestly, but it also has an ability on here. For one and a red, discard a card, sacrifice a vampire, draw two cards, activate only if an opponent lost life this turn. Pretty good card overall, guys. It really is. Got all four Valderan Epicures. We do get to see this one, so I'm actually not going to go over it. Uh, same thing with Bloodthirsty Adversary for now. I'm just not going to go over it. We got four Cemetery Gatekeepers. It's a two mana, two one with first strike. When Cemetery Gatekeeper enters the battlefield, exile a card from a graveyard. Whenever a player plays a land or casts a spell, if it shares a card type with the exiled card, Cemetery Gatekeeper deals two damage to that player. So one thing to watch out for, of course, is it's not a you may exile a card. You are forced to exile a card if there is one there. So if the only card in anyone's graveyard is your play with fire, that play with fire is getting exiled, which means you won't be able to bring it back later on with your adversary. So just something to watch out for, I guess, right? More vampires. We got four Valderan Thrill Seekers. It's a three mana, one one with backup two. So when this creature enters the battlefield, you put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. If that's another creature, it also gains the abilities printed below this one until end of turn. So, what's printed below? For one mana, sacrifice this creature. It deals damage equal to its power to any target. Thrill Seeker has been an absolute MVP every time I've played with it. The, the card seriously knows how to plug so much extra damage into the opponent. It's going to pair really nicely with cards with first strike, like Gatekeeper as well. <laughs> like, just plugging a couple plus one plus one counters. Like, First Strike is a really solid ability on so many levels, so yeah, extra counters on it sounds good to me. Got a couple dominating vampires here. This is a 3 mana, 3-3 three, three. Uh, vampire, of course. When it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of vampires you control until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. Pretty solid creature, guys. It really is. What you end up doing with this is you take away an important blocker from the opponent and then full swing with all your vampires. Oh, and their important blocker, too. So <laughs> it's going to be decent in here, especially since I kind of built the deck around the ETBs of Thrillseeker, a dominating vampire epicure. I mean, adversary technically has an ETB as well and gatekeeper, too, I suppose. Uh, so the top end is kind of playing around with that concept. We have a couple Orthians, uh, Hero of Lava Brink. This is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three legendary creature. It's a human soldier, so it's not a vampire, unfortunately. For 1 and a red, you can tap this. Create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control. It gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Activate only as a sorcery. I think this is actually going to be pretty decent in here, guys. Doing something like copying a Thrill Seeker sounds really powerful, especially when... The copied thrill, thrill Seeker can always back itself up, and then you can use that bottom ability uh, since, I mean, it's going to sacrifice itself anyways, you know what I mean? So you might as well uh, maybe try to swig with it and then sacrifice it. I don't know. I think Orthian's going to be sweet in here. We also have a single Jaxus, the Troublemaker. This is a four mana, two, three, but it does have that blitz for one and a red. And then for one red mana, you can tap this, discard a card. Create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control. It gains haste, and when this creature dies, draw a card. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Activate only as a sorcery. So, I'm opting for more Orthians over Jaxus because Orthians a 3-3. And one of the main pieces of removal that I see all the time is cut down. <laughs> and if it's not cut down, then you're up against Mono Red, and it's going to be a play with fire, right? Now, unfortunately, if you are up against Mono Red, then, of course, like Lightning Strike also hits Orthian. But still, that, that's kind of the uh, the thought process there. Also, the Jaxus, in order to copy, you do have to discard a card, too, which could be pretty steep overall. All right, what else do we got packed in here, guys? All four Play With Fires, all four Lightning Strikes, both working really well with the Bloodthirsty Adversary. 
have a single Ren's Resolve in here just to, I don't know, kind of act as card draw, but not really. <laughs> I think the one Ren's Resolve is going to be pretty decent. It's going to be moments where we actually just want to find land with it in this particular build. We have a couple Mechanized Warfare in here, pretty much working really well with everything in here. You know, we have the Valderan Epicure to work with uh, the Warfare too. Over in the mana base, we have Mishra's Foundry, which when you do power this up, it's an artifact, so it works with the Mechanized Warfare. That's really nice. Of course, we're rocking the single Crucible of Defiance and 22 other mountains, so yep, 24 total land. Going to be pretty important in here, especially if you want to look at uh, Bloodthirsty Adversary as a potential 5-drop every now and then with that uh, Adversary ability to be able to pick up a Lightning Strike or a Play With Fire back from the grave. Um on that note, you know, being able to recast a Ren's Resolve could be very important. It's going to be a lot of moments if the game does go on too long and you're in the middle of the game, then seeing six or seven mana isn't half bad for this particular build. You can do pretty ridiculous things if you do have a lot of mana. Like, could you imagine being able to play a Dominating Vampire and a Thrill Seeker on the same turn and then activating the Thrill Seeker ability on the creature that you took with the Dominating uh, dominating vampire that just seems really good doesn't it but of course that is a ton of mana so you'd only ever see that in the mid to late game okay honorable mentions guys and the festivities didn't make the cut this time around same with kumano faces kakazan although it would be pretty excellent in here we have a lot of great two drops to lead out on the uh, second chapter of kumano so Vulcan Wrath Perforator could be a really cool budget option to replace any of our two drop vampires with. Now, of course, it's not going to be as good, but that ability does work with the mechanized warfare. So it's definitely something to consider. So if you don't have any gatekeepers, just swap it out. You know, the Vulcan Wrath Perforator isn't half bad. We've played with this in the past and it actually does a thing every now and then. And like I said, yeah, once you get mechanized warfare out, it can be super deadly. Alluring Suitor could be a 3-mana vampire that you could use to replace some of our 3-mana uh, cards. Because, yeah, a lot of these vampires are expensive, man. A lot of rares, a lot of mythics. So, <laughs> and Alluring Suitor, it, it, it actually is pretty good. It is not bad at all. So, something to consider, I suppose. Markov Retribution. Almost made the cut, couldn't find room for it. Same with Nahiri's Warcrafting. I keep bringing this up, but I, I find when I play Mono Red recently that this big burn has been super important, but I couldn't find room for it this time. So it'll be interesting to see how much we actually, like in the games, if I'm just like, oh man, a Warcrafting would be so good here. So yeah, definitely something to consider. Uh, Vampire's Vengeance could be one to consider for this build. Um, honestly, not bad. It really isn't. And I don't think the Valderan Estate would be worth it in this particular version of Vampires, but it's over here in the honorable mentions for a reason. Okay, guys, is that everything? I think so. Honestly, I think the deck's going to be relatively decent, but we'll find out together. Let's go ahead, take it into some ranked, and see how we do. Right into that first match, guys. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Ooh, this is a terrible first hand. Opponent goes first, too? I mean, I, I like that we have early removal, but where's our vampires, man? You know what? I'm gonna mulligan, actually. I, I don't like that hand at all. Here we go, much better. We'll send the Orthean. That seems relatively unnecessary. Right now, at least. It could be good, but... All right, right into Pit Fighter, I suppose. I'm going to play the Brushland. Okay, Courier's Briefcase. Sure, sure. Well, that blocks the Pit Fighter pretty well, I would say. They probably would love to take that trade. Going Play With Fire into the 1-1 one, one doesn't seem particularly great. I'm just going to... Play the adversary and keep Pit Fighter back. Instead of swinging into the 1-1, one, one, that just doesn't seem like the best thing to do. And it doesn't seem like just playing Burn on the 1-1's one, the best either. I, I don't know. It, it's funny how a 1-1 one, one can hold up a turn like that. <laughs> Couple 1-1's, one, okay. They probably would double block adversary, right? 
The 1-1's one, not even the reason to play briefcase. Real realistically, they want ramp. Ooh, gleeful demolition. Uh oh, guys, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. That's a convoke deck. Mm hmm. Mechanized warfare. That's a good draw. It's good, but man, and the festivities would be great here. It was in the honorable mentions. We can see where they end up blocking. We have two pieces of burn open, but we might have to just hit the opponent's face with the burn when it comes time. I can only imagine the Convoke is going to come down next turn. Getting rid of two of these would not be bad. Pit Fighter is still going to have to stay back. If they double block two of their... Okay. All right. Good. So they, they wanted to Convoke there's the thing. But if we swung with Pit Fighter, I don't think they would have taken that. That's still a great trade, and they probably would still have enough to convoke whatever big thing they wanted to. So as long as they don't have lifelink, I think we can get there. I do. Especially if they tap everything down. If everything gets tapped down, they have one creature. We full swing with our creatures. At least one gets through for three. We have four on Lightning Strike and another three from Play With Fire, so... More burn off the top could be good. Adversary's not. That is it. Is it? Um, get six through. If we can survive the turn, trample ward to 16, 16. We're not going to survive the turn if we swing. Are we? No, we're, we're not. We're not going to survive. Darn, guys. <laughs> That's rough, man. That's super rough, and that happened fast. Hold up, opponent. I'm thinking, buddy. I, I got to make sure. I don't want to let anybody down. Got to make sure. If we had one more mana to be able to play everything, then we'd be able to play adversary. Full swing, get six through on the ground, uh, get four from the lightning strike and then three from the play with fire but we don't we don't have a fifth mana as a matter of fact this is only the fourth turn right that's crazy dude that's insane man so if we get an extra blocker down we're gonna take the 16 here we, we can block three we're, we're gonna take 18 total so we keep the burn open take 18 yeah if we can survive the turn then maybe <laughs> i don't i don't know though i don't know yeah we, we need the extra blocker down to be able to block on the ground because the the full swing is what was going to kill us that's brutal man yeah that this can happen so fast with uh, Gleeful Demolition. The Convoke cards, uh, once again, I keep bringing it up. Every time we see it, every time we play with it, like there's got to be a configuration where Convoke is just excellent. I mean, just look at this. Look at this game, dude. Oh, man. Jetmir! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no, guys. Um. Oh, 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 oh. Um, it doesn't buff its toughness so we will in fact be able to lightning strike the jet mare that's good news that's good news they're gonna full swing regardless and we should technically only oh now we're gonna take 19 no matter what aren't we uh if we take out jet mare now maybe no i think the epicure does it i i think we're gonna take 19 from a full swing I was going to say, if we take out Jetmere now, maybe they don't full swing because they're, they're going to lose so many tokens. But I think they I think they know that it's a full swing. And right here, and 18. Yep. GG opponent. Wow, that really lined up with the Epicure there, too. Oh, man. Hopefully, I didn't miss the extra damage getting through to the opponent's face. I don't believe so. I think we were really, really close with the Warfare, but... Yeah, too much aggression from the opponent. Very cool deck, though. I appreciate the variety. But I'll tell you what, guys. You better watch out. Better watch out for those builds, man. <laughs> that that just does not look like jank at all. <laughs> and they're, they're going to be having those ban announcements very, very soon. Uh, it's actually just a few days away. 
but I've been trying to put together lists that I don't think will be affected by the bans. That's one of the, uh, that's another reason to try mono red vampires because we don't actually know if like Blood Tithe Harvester is going to get hit. I don't think Blood Tithe Harvester will get banned, but you never know. It's a very powerful creature and so just trying different things. All right, we go first. Good hand. I like it. Let's get that Epicure down. Yeah, that last game, just in case, you know, that's definitely one that I'll have to go back and watch and, and redo the uh, calculations to see if I missed anything. Nothing in the grave. I'm going to wait on the Gatekeeper. And we're going to go a little wide here with the Epicure and the Pit Fighter, I would say. How do you guys feel about that? Could just be some basic Grixis over there, so... Uh, Grixis does run Brotherhood's End every now and then, though, so that's something to consider. Hey, speaking of Blood Tithe Harvester. <laughs> All right. Thrill Seeker is great, dude. Thrill Seeker is excellent. I wonder if we play this before combat, full swing, they block the 3-3. Three, three. It's not a bad trade. We get three through. And we have an extra creature on the ground then. Because there's an option. They, they have an option here when we do this. They could actually just block the 1-1 one, one and not trade and take 5, which would be really good for us. Um, They actually take out the Pit Fighter over the 3-3 three, three Valdera and Epicure. I mean, I'll take it. I guess the Pit Fighter does have the ability on it as well, so that is something to think about. So we can go Gatekeeper to pick up their Blood Tithe Harvester, but we'd want to play our other creature first or have the uh, Thrill Seeker's ability here too. Got their little bit of ramp. Yeah, we're just, we're going to play it all out. I guess we'll swing with our 3-3 first. To, is it worth getting 4 through to lose a vampire? Probably not. Not this time around. Even though we had the Thrill Seeker's ability open. Do we still go wide or anticipate? Alright, we're going to play around a Brotherhood's End and keep the Thrill Seeker ability open as well. How do you guys feel about that? So now if they do something like play shielder they're gonna take an extra two from gatekeeper too so yeah yeah this is uh we got a solid setup the biggest thing would be brotherhood's end from the opponent or another board wipe too they swing we are gonna block with our first strike gatekeeper for sure so invoke despair might be coming through we'd we'll probably just get rid of uh epicure Okay, Corpse Appraiser, go down to seven because Gatekeeper is a decent card, man. They hit the Pit Fighter, grab a card. They have two mana open. Two Invoke Despairs in the grave. That's good news, right? So because we have the one mana, I wonder if we use this now to get the damage through. I'm actually going to go... Blood token, get rid of the Orthian and look for burn, because the opponent's low enough that this is probably important. How do you guys feel about that? And if we see a land off the top, I don't think we want to play the Orthian, so... Because we're wide enough here. Let's see. They block Gatekeeper, they take five. If this is a make disappear and we see a play with fire off the top, then... Oh, so we got a land off the blood. Oh, another pit fighter. Oh my goodness, guys. <laughs> um, So before combat, we could do blood token, get rid of this and see what we see. Because again, if we find burn, it's not bad at all, man. It really isn't. I'm going to ditch the land, though, so that way we have enough to restock the board if we need to with the Pit Fighters. Another land. Land isn't bad. It isn't. It's 
So how much damage are they going to risk here? Do we keep the gatekeeper back or let them block it? I think we full swing. I don't think now's the time to hold back against Grixis. You know what I mean? They're going to trade. Okay, awesome. We get a good chunk of damage through. And do we continue to play? Do we continue to play around a board wipe? can actually draw two off of Pit Fighter, see what we see. That wouldn't be bad. It filters out. 50. See if it lands first, right? I mean, I guess, it, I guess it does. So it filters out. We can sacrifice our Epicure over here, which isn't doing too much. You don't want to get rid of the Thrill Seeker because of that ability. So we're drawing two. We're looking for burn. There it is. Lightning Strike. Okay, sweet. <laughs> very, very nice. All right. We'll see if they can uh, pull anything off here. Chandra Hope's Beacon. Um, That doesn't have life gain or anything else fancy, right? So take out some creatures. And they have their blocker for the Thrill Seeker. But because we filtered so much. Oh, wow. Jaxus is a great draw too. That that also could do it. Copy Thrill Seeker and then use Thrill Seeker's ability, right? We have enough mana for uh, Jaxus play. So if we didn't find Burn, let let's go through that real quick. If we didn't find Burn, we could have played our fifth land. Jaxus Blitz for two, activate ability for one. We still have uh, two mana open then. Yeah, because it's only three to do that. We had the Lightning Strike to discard, but let's pretend that was like another land or something and we were forced to do Jaxus. We would copy Thrill Seeker, uh, target anything, <laughs> uh, give it back up to, and then use that ability right away for uh, the three damage. It's pretty cool, man. That's cool. I like it. Taking out Grixis too? I mean, come on. Now they did miss out on a couple Invoke Despairs, but... We were plugging damage in early on pretty good, so that was sweet, guys. Let's keep on going. <laughs> oh, man. We get a drink of water real quick while I wait for the next match. All right, opponent. What you bring into the table, buddy? Okay, Ren's Resolve. Man, good hand, right? Yeah. I love seeing the pit fighters. Underplayed one drop, for sure. But being in here to work with the vampire theme, I'd love to see Dominating Vampire do something this, this game. This is a good example hand of why having like double Mishra's Foundries could be a bad thing. So we might go Ren's Resolve for the turn. Start with the swing. See if they burn the Pit Fighter. They do end up burning Pit Fighter. But I still think it might be Ren's Resolve. How do you guys feel? Make sure we can get that third mana. And if we see double land, it's fine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, there is a reason we have 24 in here. And not like 22. Like, Actually, I think a lot of mono red plays 21 land, right? Uh-oh. That's not good, guys. Well, we better play our adversary over here. Yeah, we're 11 cards into the deck. Two of them are land, so we're, we're, we'll be overdue for next turn. So hopefully we see it. We could have kept the adversary back to block since we're up against Mono Red, but we're trying to do the same thing they're doing. So I, I don't know. Depends. Dominating Vampire can't even take the Squee right now. We still had the Pit Fighter then. Different story, I guess. Go wide here, get some blockers. Play with Fire hits a lot. Eldon is not a card we want to hit with that right now, though. Real Seeker's okay. Gets the Adversary to a 4-4. Gotta be real with you guys. I think we're on the defense, but I, I like just getting as many vampires down as possible. If we swing for four, and we have the pit fighter as a blocker, if they burn the pit fighter, at least that's not hitting our face. Down to 14. 
Dominating Vampire, Steel Squee. You know what? Just because it's fun, I, I think we're technically supposed to be the ones on the run right now. Like, we're, we're supposed to be defending as much as possible. Oh, Invasion of Ragatha. Very nice opponent. Cleans up Pit Fighter, and they can get a full swing now. The question is, do they want to flip the invasion or go face? Yeah, face. Yep, yep, yep. So, I wasn't prepared for the invasion. I thought if they had burn, it was at least just going to hit the pit fighter, but no, that hit our face really hard. So if I kept blockers back, obviously that would have been a little different. If dominating vampire that blocks really well, and a play with fire then, dominating vampire can take the squee for a turn, which means we'll untap with a goblin when it comes time. Take the squee. Like, look at this. Look at our swing, guys. Dude, we have some serious power packed in. <laughs> We'd have a seven swing here and a play with fire to play for the turn two. So nine damage. Man, I'll tell you what. These could have gone either way for sure. Uh, unfortunately, it's probably just going to be like another invasion or a, a lightning strike from the opponent. But still, pretty cool. Get to untap with the goblin if if we get to survive the turn like it's not bad oh ooh, ooh. they found a mountain but they didn't find a lightning strike unless they just played reckless maybe they are doing their quests too you never know so full swing they don't they don't know oh wait wait hold on can i can i nope it's too late crap <laughs> i should have hit the squee before the swing guys that's my bad I, I waited too long for the uh, play with fire. It's an oopsie daisies. Oh, they're going to keep it back. I wish I could full control take that squee out before they swing. So the problem with taking out the Feldon is that they know that if we don't trade with an adversary... Then they're going to see three off the top, find a lightning strike that way. If we take two down to one, then they might have an end the festivities or a play with fire in hand. I think it's going to be the trade with the adversary and then play with fire the squee. And hope that they don't see anything off of the fell done. It, we can't not block because there's a, there's a good chance that they just have that damage in their hand. Oh, Ren's resolved. Nice. That was a good card to hit with it. Oh, actually just play the second Feldon too. That's good too. <laughs> maybe, wait, it, maybe they didn't see the Ren's Resolve, but no, I, I like the second Feldon play. That was, a, that was a good play opponent. The question is, do they want to keep anything open? Oh, Reckless Impulse. They're just looking for that Lightning Strike, man. Oh, Stoke the Flames, that'll do it. Is there any way through any way through guys play with fire we could scry so they have the blocker and the squee i i guess we go scry because thrill seeker might be able to do a thing next turn so if we see like another play with fire or something it's definitely not crucible a uh, mechanized warfare oh buddy yeah stoke the flames ends the game next turn this could have been anyone's game guys this is this is a good one so we go, we go Thrill Seeker full swing. They have blockers for days and then Thrill Seeker doesn't wrap up the game, unfortunately. Yep. It's, it's better than, it's better than nothing though. Let, let's get the swing in before they just cast the Stoke the Flames on our face. So I guess we'll go on to Goblin for something a little wider here, right? And then they, they just block everything without any worries, yeah. So I wonder if I could have done anything a little better there. Probably. I, I probably missed something somewhere along the way. Stoke the flames. Good game, opponent. Good game. 
Yeah, I, I probably missed something somewhere along the way, but yeah. Nice, that, that was a good one. It's good when you still have fun. <laughs> uh when when you're when you're losing, right? The classic version of mono red that we're seeing, uh like from the opponent there, I don't know how often they actually run stoke the flames, but I think honestly they should. Uh, my version of mono red that that I would put together would have more flyers, so all the phoenixes I would run, and I would run all the stokes, all the stoke the flames, all the lightning strikes, all the play with fires. So that's what, um, 12 pieces of burn and then eight phoenixes. And then from there, like that, that would be my first shell. From there, it would just be filling out based on what meta you're seeing. And so obviously things like Kumano faces Kakazan would probably make the list as a four of and stuff like that as well. Uh, fighter. We really haven't seen the two mana Phoenix too often. I thought about play with fire for veteran so we could pick it up with gatekeeper this turn, but I, I think that, I mean, they, they might actually block. It's, <laughs> it's not a bad trade for either of us. It really isn't prevent some life gain here and then still pick it up with gatekeeper. I think that's fine. No, they're going to take the two. Ren's Resolve isn't bad. I still... I want to take Veteran with Gatekeeper, I do. Alright. Ren's Resolve. Got Pit Fighter, Jaxus. Jaxus could help us filter away some of these lands. Thalia's a pain, as, as usual. <laughs> yeah, Jaxus could help us... Wait, we can Blitz it still, right? Yes, yes, yes. You may play those cards. Okay. We could just go play with Fire Thalia. Sure. Or Lightning Strike for that matter, but... I like the filter on the Jaxus. I, I don't think it's bad at all. Because we go Blitz. And we're going to get to draw off of the Blitzed Jaxus. We copy the Pit Fighter. Get rid of a land. This is good, guys. We're going to draw pretty well here. They have a great block, but we could full swing, but it's not worth it. It isn't. Because they would just block here, and then everything gets sacrificed on our turn anyways. Okay, we drew another land. Let's see what we get off of this. Epicure. Okay. I liked that filter, guys. I think that was pretty good. We got rid of at least one land. Oh, we're in trouble, but... It wasn't bad. This is another deck where end the festivities would be so good, man. It would hit everything except uh, the initiate. But yeah, end the festivities made the honorable mentions for a reason, guys. It really depends what you're up against. I'm gonna take the two there for sure. Um, Orthian, okay. So I guess we could pick up something here. I, I A creature wouldn't be a bad thing to pick up. Take Jaxus with Gatekeeper. We probably just go play with Fire Thalia, though, and then get Gatekeeper the Thalia. Gatekeeper wants to hit this board before they start piling on a bunch more humans, right? It's, it's too bad they already played so many already. Okay. Go play with fire. It, it wouldn't be bad to hit the veteran so they stopped gaining life, but realistically, we don't want our lightning strikes to be three mana. So I'm going to take care of the Thalia. We're going to grab the Thalia and let Gatekeeper kind of balance out the veteran for now. Um, any trade here is pretty good. And honestly, we, yeah, we couldn't have swung first because their, no, no, their Thalia was tapped. That's my bad, right? Yeah, they tapped down Thalia for some damage. So we probably should have swung first with the Pit Fighter, but it worked out. We got the damage through. Orin's Hamlet. Gatekeeper putting in some work, man. But uh, Lunark Veteran balancing it out a little bit, especially since they get an extra human from the Torrens too. We got to take care of this Veteran, guys.
Orthian not doing too much with this current board state. Hamlet's scary. Torrens is probably the target to hit instead of the, the veteran again. Too bad we couldn't take this out early on. We're going to be taking some damage here too. Is it going to be Orthian and Epicure? I think it's going to be Epicure. Blood token the... Uh, this away. Let's see what we see. We also have Pit Fighter if we wanted to. I mean, we could do that again. Draw two. We're losing a creature though, and the opponent's going pretty wide. That takes two mana. We won't have the Lightning Strike to take out the Torrens then too. But we might find a play with fire. I think we're in trouble, guys. And I, honestly, I don't mind doing this. I really don't. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of the Epicure. Even though Epicure is better to copy with the Orthian. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, Pit Fighter. Wow, I'm using a timeout and everything. Epicure number two gets us ready. We have Chump Blockers. <laughs> uh, but Gatekeeper definitely hurts. So we got rid of Pit Fighter over Epicure for the Orthian's ability. Even though Epicure's a weaker creature, it has the better ETB. If it if it even comes down to that, guys. Uh, I The reason I was filtering so heavily there was because I think we're in trouble. Okay, Initiate gets buffed. Oh, uh, the Human Soldier has training too. Luckily, we can do that. And we can chump the Hamlet take two. Let Initiate through. Yeah, I think we're in trouble regardless, guys. I, I wish there was a better way to uh, take care of that veteran early on. But the opponent just has a terrific setup. <gasps> and they saw a Seat of the Empire too. Oh, man. Yeah, they, they have a terrific setup, dude. Hamlet. <laughs> Uh, honestly, opponent, props for playing Hamlet, man. We've tried to make this work a few times on the channel, and uh, every time we played it, it was it was rough. Like, there were so many times we were just like, man, this card should be good. It's a three mana ward two. That's decent, and it has a chance to be huge every time you play it. We we really struggled getting it to a nine nine and an eleven eleven, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> That is epic, dude. Um, right, so they they definitely went wide enough over here. Dominating Vampire can take, can't take the Hamlet yet, but we had another Vampire. So I guess we'll get rid of the Orthian then. Yeah, th this game, this game was a pretty janky one. It's too bad Hamlet doesn't have Trample too. Dominating vampire, take Hamlet. We're, we're dead next turn, so I'm just I'm just playing everything, man. Oh, Ward too. Wow, wow. What do I want? I want the Torrens then. Sure, that's fine. Let's swing with Torrens and let them end the game. <laughs> this was a particularly bad one, guys. I don't even know where we would have um where we would have made different plays because we filtered so much too. So we saw so much of our deck. Like a lot of our deck, actually. Wait, we have 39 cards remaining and the opponent has 47. Oh my goodness, dude. We really filtered through. That's right, the Ren's Resolve as well helped us see a lot on the top. Some things that would have potentially changed the course of the game were just the honorable mentions we had and the festivities as a one or two of in here could have uh, gone a very long way. So I'll be a pain in the butt and uh, chump block the Hamlets then. And then we'll uh, block the Guardian with the Gatekeeper. Either way, that should be more than enough. Let's see, one, two, and that's five. And then they have another five. Wait, are we down to one? Oh no, there we go, there we go. I, I missed a 2-2 two -two somewhere. All right, how far are we? 39 minutes? Dude, one more, come on, let's do this. I'm having a blast, man. It's a it's a nice, fun, different version of Mono Red that just doesn't seem too bad. I mean, that, that last game, it, it kind of felt bad, I guess. 
just like how I, I don't want to call everything out of order there, but everything just felt out of order or one turn behind. And maybe that was just Thalia's fault, and maybe I just started playing awkwardly after Thalia landed, but Okay, we go first. It's a bad hand, isn't it? Ren's resolve could help us find the third. Alright, we're gonna keep it. Everything's pretty expensive here. Honestly, I could see making the case for 25, but I don't think so. I think 24 is probably where we want where we want the mana base. I think so. And we could, yeah, I mean, this is a great example of kind of treating Ren's Resolve as a way to uh, mana fix then, trying to find that land off of it. Adversary probably gets gobbled up by a play with fire, but at least... Oh, nice. <laughs> I was going to say, at least the play with fire doesn't hit our face then, and it's worth trying anyways. Failed on. Oh, no. All right, here we go. Thrill Seeker's great, but if we have the turn to play a Warfare, we should play it, dude. <laughs> I think so. We have the turn, so let's get it onto the board. Mono Red has trouble removing enchantments. If we see a land off the top, then Thrill Seeker becomes deadly. Because Eldon can't block regardless. We know that's swinging in. So, right now, they're technically the ones that need to be defending. So a lot of open mana, it's got to be burned. So whatever we target with Thrill Seeker gets eaten before. I could see the Ortheon play. I could see that. Thrill Seeker would have been good if they tapped out, but no, nah, that's burn. It's got to be. It's got to be burn. Oh man, maybe it's not. Ren's Resolve isn't terrible. Get Pit Fighter on the board, maybe another one drop off the top. Orthean probably gets gobbled up by a Lightning Strike anyways. We're going to try it. We didn't get a chance to play Orthean all day, so let's get it onto the board. See if it survives. It would have, honestly, it would have a better chance. Okay, Lightning Strike. Well, we tried, we tried. And again, that's a lightning strike that's not hitting our face. That is, in fact, important. Okay, discarding. Hey, this might be a Phoenix version of the build. It is not. Well, we don't know. They might not have had Phoenix in the hand. The two mana Phoenix. I can't remember its name, guys. I can't because the only name that comes to mind is the Phoenix chick, and that's not the one I'm thinking of, so. Mano, swing for two. Um, Dominating Vampire, take Feldon, swing for six, drop Pit Fighter as an emergency blocker. They only have a Foundry open. Go Thrill Seeker, swing for five. That would bring him down to two. That's getting there. Be better next turn though, wouldn't it? Because this lets us get the Pit Fighter down. All right, swing for six. Down to six, get Pit Fighter. Got a couple emergency blockers on the board for the Foundry and the Feldon. If they drop burn on the creatures, that's good for us, man. At some point, Real Seeker can come down and help us wrap up this game. I'm feeling good, but you know, we gotta, we gotta be realistic. Mono Red really knows how to plug a lot of damage through, so. Furnace Punisher, nice. Deals two damage to that player unless they control two or more basic lands. Uh, so Furnace Punisher is probably in here for all the Grixis builds. The, the opponent must be seeing a lot of Grixis, and that's a perfect example of what I mean by adding cards based on your meta. It, it sure seems like everyone sees uh, something different. Still have two open. So we're going to try Thrill Seeker. I think we're actually going to target the Pit Fighter. One, two. Opponent's at six. If we target Dominating Vampire, we can end this if they don't have a Lightning Strike in hand. 
because of mechanized warfare. <laughs> Should just be six damage to their face. Good game, opponent. Good game. That was fun. I like the Furnace uh, Punisher edition. I do like that. Wow, guys. How fun was that? That was a good time, man. That was a good time. There's so many great vampires. There's so many great vampires. I thought about uh, mono black vampires, but of course, I'm Red Cat. We had to try mono red first, and we've played mono red vampires in the past, too. Um, there's a lot of great reasons to try mono red vamps, you know? Like, Dominating Vampire is just not half bad. It really isn't. As a two of in here, I think it's great. I do like the Ortheon and the Jaxus edition, but getting them to stick on the board's the biggest problem, you know what I mean? So, maybe that's why I should have went two Jaxus and only one Ortheon. That way we could do that ability right away. Help us filter, help us copy. Copy a Dominating Vampire, take something great from the opponent. I don't know, anything like that, right? I like the two of Mechanized Warfare. I could actually see making the case for three of them and if you do pack three of these then going up those couple in the festivities could go a long way too again just based on what meta you're seeing are you seeing a lot of mono red are you seeing a lot of go wide strategies soldiers anything like that then end the festivities would be a great addition in here so if you go up those couple in the festivities then you could really make the case for the third mechanized warfare at that point i would get rid of some of your top end uh, maybe just go for a couple Jaxus and drop the uh, Orthians, right? Now you're still going to need to make some room for the end of the festivities. What would I end up doing? If you're dropping some of that top end, I could see going down to 23 land, but it's going to be a lot of moments where you just want a lot of mana regardless. Like, And you're not going to be sad to see the fourth or fifth mana right on time, especially when you have that chance for the Bloodthirsty Adversary. Which, by the way, if you do add those couple end the festivities then, you know, you have more cards to hit out of the grave with that. Luckily, we didn't get to see that thing where the gatekeeper takes the one card away from the grave that you want to hit with the uh, adversary. It's not going to happen too often, but yeah, it, I mean, it, it it probably will happen, especially if you go turn one, play with fire the opponent's face. Now you have that decision. Do you go turn two gatekeeper and take that play with fire out of your grave? <laughs> Uh, the answer, honestly, is probably yes. It depends what you're up against, too. If you're up against, like, Mono Blue, grabbing an instant early on is pretty good. It is. It's it's decent, because now every time they play a counter spell, this deals two damage to them, and that could really go a long way, huh? I like the one of Ren's Resolve. I, I think just in general, that's just going to be good, regardless. <laughs> um that's another case for maybe going down to 23 land i could even see maybe if you drop the entire top end where with the copying strategy where you're trying to copy all of the uh, etb effects then i could see going down to 22 land going up a ren's resolve and the festivities and then depending on what cards you don't want to craft right because this is a lot of mythics between gatekeeper and adversary then you could probably squeeze in that extra mechanized warfare and stuff too but Overall, I think this version of the list isn't too bad either. I, I'm not too sure what I would add or take out based on those matches. Yeah, just the end of festivity. So, guys, I hope you had as much fun as I had today. <laughs> if you made it this far into the video, I super duper appreciate uh, you. You are a champion for real. I'm stumbling over my words for no reason. I apologize, guys. I will see you in the next video.